All right, I'll call you. Looks to me like you're Kings be my queen. No dealer. Put two in the middle. Same game. Oh, it's heat. Something else. I'm. Good deal, Wheeler. You come from around here? Just passing through. I don't blame you. How about you? Got some business here. And I'm heading up to Stockton. Stockton, huh? I'm heading up that way, too, as soon as this heat lets up. Has been hot. Takes one. Opener checks. Check. Tens over eights. Each pair. <sighs> Mister, I'm used to getting my cars from the top. You are, Mister. No, no, no. Wait. Wait. Hold it. Hold it. I'm not going to kill a man over two dollars. Here, take your money. Well, me neither. Only I have a reputation for not being cheated. I wouldn't want to spoil it. You're making a mistake, mister. A big mistake. Well, we'll see about that. You got no taste for guns. How are you with your hands? Huh. Turns out it's your invitation. Right. Or you could apologize for dealing seconds. Oh, no, no, no. Let's go. You set me up. That's a fact. That's a fact. Well, now that you feel better, I'm willing to call it even. Well, I'm not. Not by a long way. You want to change your mind? For the time being. Well, what's it all about? The gruber there is worth $200 to the sheriff at Sonora. What about the other? He got in the way. It'll take three days to clear this up. And I'm in a hurry. I'll sell them to you for $150. I don't particularly like bounties. If you want your money, you'll have to wait. Well, I've waited this long. You still mad? Come on, I'll buy you a drink. I owe you one. Well, it's not going to cost you anything. Besides, it's still too hot to travel. Come on.
Well, I don't believe it. Have you got the deed? Right here. Would you mind telling me what took you so long? You've been gone almost two weeks. Oh, that's what I call a very warm welcome. No, how was the trip? Are you tired? Uh, did you have any trouble? How was the trip? Long. Are you tired? Dead. Did you have any trouble? Plenty. Well, now that those amenities are over with, would you mind telling me what took you so long? Well, I had to get 15 signatures on that deed, and I had to go in 15 different directions to do it. Anyhow, uh, anything new with the ranch? Not unless you consider a bear eating some of the stock new. Are you sure it's a bear? Yes, I'm sure. A bear will attack a herd, will attack almost anything. Yes, Nick, I know that. That's why I have half the ranch out looking for it. Nick, who the devil crossed out paragraph four? I said, who crossed out paragraph four? Signature three. But I put that in there specifically. That's the way he took it out. You want some rest. The ranch is that way. Which way? Howdy, Franklin. Howdy, Mr. Barksley. Welcome home. It's good to be back. I say, uh, you wouldn't have any of that Lowry saddle soap in stock. Would you? Don't think so. Not much demand for it. Besides, your saddle looks fine. Oh, I don't want it for my saddle. I want it for myself. Would you mind taking a look? Now. Sure, Mr. Barkley. Yeah. I'll get the rest of the shingles in just a moment, ma'am. Well, howdy, miss. Uh, my name's Nick Barkley. Mr. Barkley. You're new in town, aren't you? That's right. Nice to see you plan to stay for a while. A while. Here, I'll get that. Hold it. Now, I show you around a little bit, show you a little bit of the town, maybe, huh? Oh, I already saw it when I rode in. Now, let me guess now. You're here to teach school, right? Wrong. Dressmaker. Only when I have to be. All right, I give up. Oh, it's nice to have that settled. Oh, well, uh... Sorry, Nick. No Lowry saddle soap. Oh. This uh... is our last bundle of shingles. This will get you started. Have more tomorrow, the next day. Okay, thanks. All right, you didn't tell me your name. No, I didn't, did I? Me too, Nick. Who is she? Open an account under the name of Lael Johnson. She's staying at the old Miller place. Old Miller place, huh? By herself? I forgot to ask her. Somebody should. Well, how did he get away this time? Oh, did you mention offering a bounty? I pledged this for a hundred dollars. Parker and Hayes said they'd match it. No, three hundred dollars ought to get some results. Maybe with an ordinary bear, but not with this one. <laughs> Say, when these puppies get weaned? Oh, they've been on meat for three days now. Jared's going to start passing them out tomorrow. Well, don't forget, I promised that one to Mike Casty, the bartender. Hello, everybody. Oh, Nick. How was your trip? Great, just great. You must be very tired. Oh, no, no, not a bit. It was downhill all the way. You don't look like a man's been in the saddle two weeks. I'm just getting my second win. Well, good. Maybe you can go out hunting with us in the morning. We got a bear killing our livestock. Oh, that's good. Maybe you didn't hear me. We got a bear killing our livestock. Oh, well, bears will be bears, you know. I'll see you later. Where are you going? Oh, something came up while I was in town. I thought maybe I should get it settled. <laughs> Tell me something, Heath. Hmm? Is my imagination playing tricks, or did your brother Nick come in here after being away for a few weeks, pick up some shingles, and then leave without really saying hello or goodbye? You know, I was going to ask you the same thing. Oh. Mr. Barkley. Say, I wonder if you can help me out. If I can. Help me get rid of these shingles here. That's very considerate of you, but I am. You are in need of shingles. And I just so happen to have these two bundles hanging around the barn. And, uh, well, I started getting kind of concerned about the horses. Afraid they might step on them and hurt themselves. I have enough for now and, and more on order. Oh, it looks like rain. And you want to know something? There is nothing more useless than a shingle. Without a roof under it, expecting rain. There's not a cloud in the sky. 
And I'm not in the habit of being in debt to anyone. Oh, no, you'd be doing me a favor. You know, I spent six months looking for a place for those shingles. Hmm. Well, you can store them here for the time being, but when my order comes in, I'm going to replace them. Oh, no, come on, I'll do that. Here, come on. Thank you, I'm used to doing for myself. Well, now, I'm very glad to hear that. Glad to hear what? That you live alone. Oh! Oh, oh that must have hurt. Ah, well, something you got to learn. When you're hammering, you got to keep your eyes on that nail. Here, show you what I mean. Now, you set the shingle in here like this, see? Right up there, snug, and you grab your nail, take your hammer, like this. Oh, oh! <laughs> oh, that hurt. Oh, I'm very good at giving advice. I'm not very good at taking it. Ah! Let me see. Oh, you think it'll live? You didn't hit your hand at all. You want me to? No! <laughs> Always like this. No, no, I'm usually very shy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Say, uh, did you ever meet anyone that made you feel like you were kicked in the stomach and kept talking, trying to hide it? Yes. And it happened right from the first look? Yes. A long time ago. There's something I have to tell you. Uh, now, wait a minute. If you're going to talk to me about your past, I don't want to hear anything about it. Now, nobody lives in a crate waiting for that special someone to come by with a crowbar, open it up, and let him out. Only statues do that. Statues are just about as cold as a gun butt. I'll make some coffee. Uh, well, wait a minute. Why don't you go make some coffee? <laughs> yeah, I think I will. Here, easy now. That's it. Damage, just a little smoke. I just put them up yesterday. My sister ordered her before she went to New York. Bought this whole bunch of curtain material. She only used half of them. It's just getting in the way. Right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Must be wonderful to have so many things to get in the way. Uh, why do I always have to have holes in the roof and broken window panes and loose floorboards? Why does everything always need painting? Every time I try to make something nice, it goes wrong. Oh, easy now, easy. Can't be that bad. Nothing's that bad. I'm all right now. Thank you, Mr. Barkley. Well, now, if you're going to go on calling me Mr. Barkley, do you mind if I call you Lael? Like, uh, Lael, can I help you paint your barn? <laughs> the barn doesn't need painting. Oh, now, the almanac says it's going to be a very rough winter. Is that so? Mm. Nick. Ah, see? Much better, that is. Now that we're on a first-name basis, tomorrow night I want to pick you up and take you out to dinner. Eight o'clock. I can't. Tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Nick? These are the one you mean, Mr. Nick? Those are the ones. 
And the real good silver? The best we've got. And don't forget, I want that champagne chill. Huh? You better hurry. They're waiting for good you. Good morning, Mother. Have a little coffee? Well, you're pretty chipper for a man going on a bear hunt. Bear has nothing to do with it. Ah, the girl. The girl. The girl? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. You've known her for such a long time. Now, Mother, remember that Arab filly we paid $2,000 for? Mm hmm. Well, 10 minutes before you wrote that check, we had never laid eyes on her. Hey, Nick. Come on. We're moving out. Turned out to be the best buy we ever made. Right? Seventeen. That one looks like he just got it, too. Looks like he went into that cave. All right, the rest of you men set up a crossfire in case he gets past us. Bring some torches. Right away. My rifle. Right. Let me have your piece, sir. Will you, Gene? Thank you. I'd have known he'd leave himself a back door. Uh-huh. Okay, any up, boys. Jack's a better. Nick, you want to sit in a hand? No, no, I feel like I've been on the saddle for two weeks. I'm going to turn in. Good luck. Thank you. Dealer opens for four bits. Good evening, ma'am. Eight o'clock sharp. Oh, no, 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 I'm wrong. I'm, I'm late. I'm sorry. You're not late. I am. Two minutes. Look at that. <laughs> you ready to go? <laughs> yes. All right, let's go. Oh. No, I... What's the matter? I thought I'd make dinner for us here. Oh, no, no, no. Not the way you're dressed so pretty. We're going to go out. <laughs> Nick, I don't feel like going all the way into town. Well, who said anything about going into town? The place I picked is nice and quiet and private. Oh, no. I think maybe you just might need this, too. Do you mind if we use your buckboard? Huh? Well, all right. The carriage awaits. <laughs> I can hardly believe it. 
Champagne? Uh-huh. And a vintage year. Let's toast my lucky star. Which one is it? Well, uh, anyway, it's one of them, whichever one is working overtime. Let's toast them all. Oh. Where are we going? Well, I have something that belongs to you. Beautiful. You. You must come here often. Oh yes, when well, whenever the sky gets a little too old, a little low, uh, mountains start crowding in. Ground comes up to meet me. Well, it's my special sore place. To bring. In again? Oh, no. You're the only one that's ever been here. I uh, found this place when I was a boy. When I, when I was only six years old, I used to, I used to come here and play. Cowboys and Indians? Well, now, when I was <laughs> six years old, there were lots of cowboys and Indians. And I used to be Sir Lancelot. I used the top of a keg of nails for a shield and a Sunflower stock, it's a sword. That old oak there, he was the Black Knight. And I used to challenge him. <laughs> and I must have killed him a thousand times. It's a wonder to me how healthy he stayed all these years. I saved this place just for you. We only met yesterday. Just didn't know your name until yesterday. I've been waiting for you a long time. Absolutely delicious. I hoped you'd like it. My compliments to the chef. Well, now, uh, you may deliver those personally. What? I'd like you to come to my home. Oh, I'm afraid I don't... No, no, no. Well, there's no sense saying no. I want you to meet my family. Nick. Yeah. There's something I must tell you. And there's something I must tell you. It's about my brothers. I have to be very careful. Old Heath, for one, he'll, he'll... Well, he'll kick the carpet a couple of times, and then he'll slowly herge into the pantry. Where he's very dangerous. And Jared will find you in the pantry and start talking to you about your mind. Till he gets you in the drawing room, and... Very, very lethal. Nick, take me home, please. What's the matter? Oh, it's late and, and you have to get back to camp. Don't worry about me. Some people. It's daylight. Well, boy, how do you chew it? Oh, oh it's a. Uh, what's everyone standing around for? We got a mountain lion to catch. A bear? Now, listen, I just. 
Overslept a little bit. You mean underslept? I heard you fall over a rock when you came in. Where's my saddle? On your horse. Keith? Oh, I'll settle for a hot bath. From your expression, I gather you had no more luck today than yesterday. How was the party, Mr. Nick? It was great. And she said to give her compliments to the chef. She said that? That's right. That's just the way she said it. It's plain as day. Give my compliments to the chef. What do you know about that? What do you know about <laughs> that? Uh -oh. What was that all about? Well, uh, last night, uh, Silas set up a little picnic for me and a friend. In the middle of a bear hunt? Well, I never did need much sleep, you know. Uh, now, don't tell me. Let me guess who she is. The, uh, the gal with the beautiful eyes and no shingles. <laughs> well, wait till you meet her. Oh, I'm looking forward well, to it. You just her. best be sitting down when it happens. Mm -hmm. Don't say I didn't warn you. This is the one. This uh -huh. is the girl. Uh -huh. I'm not kidding. Oh, that reminds me. I have a chore I have to take care of. Will you be home for dinner? Probably. And I just frankly home a house guest. You shouldn't be out after dark with a bear roaming about. Oh, I had to go into town. I, I picked up the shingles I owe you. Well, no, that's not important. Bears have been known to attack human beings, you know. Yes, I know. That's why I thought maybe you might need a little protection. Oh. His name is Sir Lancelot. His father was a wolf. Mother was the best hunting dog in all of San Joaquin. He may tend to be a little vicious, but I'm sure he'll take to you as quick as I did. Oh, Nick. Oh, you darling. Oh, I feel more secure already. Now you don't have to be alone anymore. No. Say, Lancelot's going to be great company. We're both going to keep you company tonight. I want you to meet my family. Well, Nick, I can't. Why not? Well, I have so many things to do. The stove, I, I Tomorrow don't... Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night I'm having company. Company? Yeah. Nick Barkley's coming to dinner. Oh, oh him. Well, now, <laughs> you better keep your eye on him. <laughs> yes, I will. Oh, Mr. Lancelot. Tomorrow night, we're going to blindfold Sir Lancelot. Yeah. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Kind of a lonesome homecoming, honey. Where were you? I wasn't expecting you. I, I had to go into town. Who's your friend? My friend? A dog. Oh, Sir, Sir Lancelot. Sir Lancelot, huh? Hello, Sir Lancelot. I like that. 
Né? I guess I can't rightly blame you. Six months ago, a wire meet me in Denver. Denver, I got a wire meet me in San Diego. In San Diego, I got a wire meet me in Stockton. What were you expecting, a red carpet? I know, I know, but you got to give me a chance. Look, here, what I brought you back. Huh? Uh, you like that? That costs three dollars. Now, don't go away, folks. There's more to come. You like it? You will be the belle of any man's ball. The trouble is, it needs some ornamentation, like that, that brooch that I... What's this doing in here? Well, why shouldn't it be among the souvenirs? In the seven years we've been married, I've only had the right to wear it for seven months. Put it on. Wheeler, how many men did you have to kill for all these presents? as many as I have to kill for these medals. Why couldn't you stop when everybody else did? Because I don't know how to do anything else better. Leo, I'm home. How long are you home this time? Good. I've heard that before. No, you haven't. Now, this time, I mean it, Leo. Now, tomorrow morning, I'm going to go into that town. I'm going to buy the biggest rocking chair that I can find. And I'm just going to sit out in that front porch and watch the corn grow. That's not the way corn grows. Leo, I mean it. You keep it. Why? Hiding a gun won't stop you from killing. Where are you all meeting today? We're going to meet in town, then head out to Willow Drum. Well, Thompson put some honeycomb out there yesterday's bait. I'll be down at the crowd, Nick, whenever you're ready. Right. I was sorry Miss Johnson couldn't come to dinner last night. <sighs> Not any more than I was. Well, I guess uh, she's just a little shy, is all. Well, perhaps if I invited her personally. Would you? Sir Dan. Give me your thoughts. <laughs> Hello there. Good morning. I've been trying to get Sir Lancelot here to give me his paw. He sure isn't interested in learning any tricks. So it seems. I can't understand why. He looks so, so intelligent. Well, looks can be deceiving. Even in college, puppy. <laughs> I'm sure you're right. I'm Lael Johnson. And you're Victoria Barclay. Nick has told me many things about you, but he never mentioned the fact that you've been married. That's because he doesn't know. Don't you think he should know? I'm sure the fact that you're a widow wouldn't make any difference. I'm not a widow. Please come inside. I'd like you to meet my husband. Mrs. Barclay. Citations for, for bravery, for courage, for killing. This is my husband. See, when I met him, he was a bank teller. 
was as, as kind and gentle as that puppy there. And then the war came. And he went in as a private. And he came out a colonel. That's where he found himself. That's where he stayed. He's still in the army. No, no. He's, he's just still at war. He's a professional killer. Well, that puts Nick in a very interesting position, doesn't it? I didn't set out to fall in love with Nick. The first time I met him, there was no reason to tell him I was married. And the second time, he wouldn't let me. The third time... The third time, I didn't want to. I came out here because Nick asked me to invite you to our home for dinner. I plan to tell Nick the truth. When? Right away, my husband came home last night. He's gone into town now. What's wrong? Nick's on his way to town. Well, that's all right, Mrs. Barkley. They don't know each other. Nick Barkley! See you over at school, please. I don't want to appear to be unfriendly. Well, we do have a sheriff here. He does a very good job. So we, well, we have no want or uh, need for a bounty hunter. Now, do I look like I'm hunting down bounty money? At the moment, no. Well, you can take my word for it. I'm not. I made a promise to my wife. I'm giving up that game. Tell me something, Nick. Would you say I look better in this one? Or... In this one. You don't believe me, do you? Last time I took your word, I was sorry. Just like my wife. She doesn't believe me either. Hey, merchant. How much is this thing? Two dollars. Two dollars? Two. All right. I guess that's cheap enough to prove a point. Do you have a buckboard? I don't need a buckboard. Oh. Take, take it easy, horse. <laughs> well, how would you do it? <laughs> well, put it on the back of the horse like he's gonna sit on it. Yeah, like he's gonna sit on it. I'll just have to buy you a drink. And I just might drink it. <laughs> oh, it'll work as long as he doesn't decide to sit down. I'll take my chance. <laughs> You're really serious about all this, aren't you? One hundred percent. Why not? The rocks I sleep on seem to be getting harder. The rain keeps getting colder. Well, settling down seems to make a lot of sense. I've been doing a lot of thinking about that lately. Hey, what is all this after that talk about the rocks and the rain? No, not this one. This one. I've never oh. seen one like that before. $300 bounty on a bear? That's kind of unusual. Well, that old bear's been killing livestock up and down this valley. Say, you know, you're talking about settling down. You might just could use that money. But uh, you know that killing a man is not different than killing a bear. I mean, a bear don't shoot back. That's the problem. No challenge. You know, I have to say you're going to find that chair very uncomfortable compared to that saddle. Uh, the drink? Hmm? Are you going to buy me a drink? Oh. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> hey, here they found a longhorn out beside the pasture. Makes 18. Jerry, I thought you were still in court. Oh, well, they let us out for recess once in a while, so I thought I'd come by to wish you good luck. Oh, Wheeler, it's my brother Jared and Heath. Right. Hello there. You joined the bear hunt? Oh, he gave up bounty hunt. Hey, Heath, why don't we get the dog you promised me? Uh, Jared, I thought you brought it in this morning. I thought you did. Wasn't in the barn this morning. Hey, you fellas, by any chance, talking about Sir Lancelot. Yes, sir, what? Sir Lancelot. The name I gave to one of Queenie's pups. Heath promised it to me. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Cass. I didn't know. I gave it to a girl I know. Keep her company when I'm not around. Uh, Nick, that girl wouldn't happen to be the one you met in front of the general store the other day, would it? 
Or the one you went bear hunting with the other night? Right, on both cases. But uh, be careful what you say. This one's different from the others. What kind of dog was it? Just a collie pup. This one's different, huh, Nick? Wait till you see it. When you do, look, don't touch. It's my personal property. No doubt you've got reasons to believe the young lady shares that sentiment. Yes. I have reasons. Well, now, this is no way to catch a bear, is it? Let's go out and see how those honeycomb traps are doing. Let's move out. The bear looks like a community project. It is. Well, since I aim to become a part of the community, maybe I ought to just ride along after all. Oh, no, I told you, we're there, yeah. More than welcome. I have to ride back and get my rifle. No, no, there's not time. Cassidy, do me a favor, will you? Lend yeah. this man your rifle. Sure. There you go. Thanks, Nick. You know, since Bounty's my game, you nail that bear. I'm going to feel like you just took something away from me. Uh -huh. And I don't like to have things taken away from me. like you tried for the bait. Sure been nosing around. Left track's going in six different directions. The bees fell our trap. Maybe we should pair off and spread out. Good idea. All right if I rob with you, Nick? So long as you don't decide to use me as a shield again. You have my word. All right, let's go. Come on. All right, Charlie, you and Bill, let's go. Tracks here look pretty fresh. You want to move off right? I'll cover from the left flank of position. He's on the other side of that ridge. He must have spun. What are you trying to do, Wheeler? Collect the whole bounty on that bear? No! I'm trying for the bounty on you, Barkley! You're out of your mind! There's no bounty on me! Lael Johnson! Lael? My wife! I didn't know. You knew she was married. She must have told you that. Well, I realize now she tried to tell me, but I wouldn't let her.
We killed a bear, Nick. What are you shooting at? That little accident here is all. You go on, we'll catch up with you. You sure? I'm sure. Let's go. Why don't you let me off? Because I figure Lael deserves a choice. Now, we're going to go see her. If she tells me to ride out, you're never going to see me again. If she tells you to ride out, I better not ever see you again, or I'll finish what you started here. Leftovers. I guess that's all you've ever gotten from me. The time I had left over after I'd gotten through doing the things I had to do. Or wanted to do. Or wanted to do. Look, Leo, sometimes a man starts running a race so fast that he pulls a hamstring muscle. And then he knows if he slows up, he'll fall down. I've always been afraid of falling. Did it ever occur to you that I might be afraid to? Afraid of loneliness, afraid of a, a dark night in a strange place. Afraid of the chance that you might never come back. I've always made it because I've had you to come back to. You were always there when I needed you. But where were you when I needed you? From now on, I'll be close enough so you just call my name. You told me the same thing last night. Where were you today? That was different. It's always different. A week, two weeks. Pick up those guns. How do I know? Because I'm giving you my word on it. And the one thing I have never done is lie to you. I realize Nick Barkley has things that a woman wants. Roots, an important family, money. But you are my wife, and I want you to stay that way. Because I love you, Leo. It's the same. I won't force it. It's up to you. Goodbye, Lil. Goodbye, Nick.
Hey, a glass for Mr. Barkley. What are you doing all dressed up like a San Francisco banker? Hey, I bet today's a big day, huh? It's the day, all right. You know, Nancy Stays doesn't come into Stockton, so I have to pick her up in the Stego at 3 o'clock. You're not nervous, are you? Nervous? What have I got to be nervous about? Not a thing. Darn right. You know, Heath, I must have written Nancy Briggs a hundred letters over the past two years, and it's just like courting her in person. You bet. She's a genteel Eastern woman, but that don't make no difference. She and me are gonna get along just fine. If you don't need any more of that, you're gonna meet that three o'clock stage. What do you say I do the honors? Well, that's mighty kind of you, Heath. <laughs> Hey, he's oh. Jim. Oh. <laughs> I think Nancy'll like these. Well, we'll soon find out. Hey, easy, Jim. I'm just fine. I'm just fine. Are you sure you can drive that buggy all right? Yes, I can drive that buggy. Don't worry. Ah, oh, Jim! Hey, you hurt, Jim? It's my back again. Well, don't you move. I better get the dog. No, no. Nancy, she's expecting me. Well, you can't drive that buggy like that. She's waiting for me. Who's going to pick her up, Heath? Mister. What happened? The outlaws they were held up. It was awful, just awful. <laughs> he shot the driver and that poor girl. She, she caught a stray bullet. Miss, Miss Briggs here and I were lucky to escape with our lives. How long ago did they leave? Oh, about a half an hour. We thought it'd be safer to stay here by the stage. Oh, you were right. We'll see the sheriff when we get into Stockton. Do you think we could put the suitcases in your surrey there? Sure. Thank you. Well, I I'm supposed to meet someone at Pistico. Well, I'm Heath Barkley, Miss Briggs, Jim North's friend. Oh, hello. I'm afraid I have some disappointing news. I hope he didn't change his mind. No, that's just a little trouble with his back. Nothing serious. Oh, I'm glad. It's nothing to worry about. In fact, Jim sent these to you. Oh, they're lovely. Well, the sooner we get started, the sooner you can tell Jim in person. Thank you very much, Mr. Barkley. I'll be staying in town for a while. I'd like to buy you a drink sometime if I may. It'll be my pleasure. Goodbye, Miss Briggs. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Clayton. And I want to thank you for all the kindness you've shown. Don't mention it. Oh, and I'd, uh, I'd like to wish you the greatest happiness in your forthcoming marriage. Thank you. I must confess, Mr. Barkley, I'm a little bit nervous. Well, there's nothing to be nervous about. Well, I keep thinking that Jim won't like me. Oh, Jim will like you. Miss Briggs, uh, 
Have you ever been in Denver? Denver, no. Carson City? No, Mr. Barkley, why? Well, you just look familiar to me. Well, I don't see how that could be. I, I've never been west of St. Louis. I mean, school teachers, see, they can't afford to travel very much. Uh, Mr. Parker, you're a good friend of Jim's, aren't you? Well, I've known him a long time. Well, tell me about him. Well, I wouldn't know where to begin. What's his favorite kind of food? Well, I hope you're good with chili peppers. Chili peppers? He acquired quite a taste for them in Mexico last year. Oh. Well, didn't he write you about that? Oh, no, he didn't. Well, I guess he wouldn't. Why? What happened? Well, there was a flood in some small Mexican border town. He and Maria went down to see what he could do. He stayed about three months. Oh, three months. And he's quite a man, and his, his wife must have been quite a woman to stay down there with him. And Maria's his housekeeper. His wife, Rachel, died eight years ago. Oh, of course, his housekeeper. How could I forget? He, he's mentioned her so often in his letters. How much further do we have to go? About 20 minutes. Oh, I'm much more tired than I thought. Mind if I rest a little bit? Everything's going to be fine. Yes. Here they come. Oh. Maria, here, hide this. Quick. Uh, no, Maria, how do I look? Oh, you look handsome, Senor G. Good, come, Maria. Maria, I will stand here. You open the door. Yes. Well, there she is, Jim. Safe and sound. Uh, please, I take. I'm so glad you're here. Did you have a nice trip? Oh, yes, it was Wonderful. fun. I'm glad you had a nice trip. I better be going, Jim. Oh, no, Heath. No, stay. Uh, have some coffee or something. Come in, come in. You must be tired, Nancy. The coffee will pick you up. And uh, we'll have something to eat. Come on, sit down. Right here. Sit down. Nancy, you and me, we got a lot to talk about. I suppose we do. Now you can understand why I didn't ask for your picture. It means I'd have to send you one of mine. Well, I didn't want you to see what I looked like, my age and all. Jim, you don't have to. Well, now you've seen me. You can turn around and walk out right now, Nancy. I wouldn't blame you one bit, not one bit. Just ask Ethan, he'll take you back to town. I want to stay. You sure, Nancy? I'm sure. I promise you, you're going to be happy here. I'm going to make you happy. I'll love you. Uh, everybody will. Jim, I, I'm, I'm happy already, and I'll make you a good wife. The best I know how. Excuse me, dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Now, Nancy, I don't want you spending all that time in the kitchen from now on. Wait till you see the dinner she's prepared for us. She thought of everything. As a matter of fact, she put in just the right amount of chili pepper. Oh, with a little help from Maria. Jim is fortunate to have found you, Nancy. And we're all very glad he did. Thank you, Mrs. Barclay. Tell me, what can I do to help you with your wedding? As a matter of fact, Victoria, I was going to talk to you about that. Nancy would like to go into town and buy a few things. Well, I'd love to take her. I know just the seamstress to make your wedding dress. Heath can drive us in, and I'm sure there'll be enough time for me to show you our school. Your school? I hope you like it. We can use a good elementary grade teacher. The children are lovely, and with your experience, there'll be no problem at all. Oh, Mrs. Barclay, I don't intend to teach school. Oh. Nancy, in your letters, I thought you said you'd like to maybe teach school. Oh, well, Jim, I've changed my mind. I don't want to teach school. Oh, I mean, you, you understand, don't you? I, I have a more important job here, learning to be a rancher's wife. I want to devote all my time to that. Of course, Nancy, I understand. I'm sure you do too, Victoria. Of course. We'll find somebody else. Dinner is served. 
Oh, Jim, would you mind too much if I escorted the next Mrs. North to dinner? <laughs> Not at all, Victoria. and materials. Pete, would you like to help us make a few decisions? Yeah, well, I think I just made one. I'll be back in two hours. <laughs> You've got here, Stockton. Much, uh, much bigger than I thought. It's growing every day. Place for expansion. Might be a likely spot for investments. You're in investments? Yes, with my father. You may have heard of him, Everett Clayton. Owns half of San Francisco. Can we play poker all on one card? Mr. Barkley? Three. The dealer will uh, try his luck with his. I bet five dollars. I'll raise you five. It's Mr. Barclay's bet. I'm out. I said I'll raise you five. I'll just call you. Pull the flush. Not good enough. Have a full house, all royal. You didn't have to draw any. I'd say you're a pretty slick dealer. Take it easy, mister. Can you get your hand on it? dog off right now. Come on, Johnny. I, uh, I think I've had enough poker for today, Mr. Barkley. It's a very bad habit of mine playing poker with strangers. I must get over it. And may I buy you that drink now? Whiskey. Bartender. Whiskey's please. How is, uh, how is Miss Briggs? Just fine. Should we get married pretty soon? Well, that's splendid, splendid. Too bad about that other girl on the stage. What was her name? Miss, uh, Miss Morrison. Sheila Morrison. That's a terrible shame about her. Was she from out here or just visit? Well, I, I really don't know. She never said much of anything. Well, you're lucky. Usually a man rides with a woman more than an hour. He gets her life history. <laughs> yes, of course. Would you, uh, would you like a cigar, Mr. Barkley? No, thanks. Well, that's unfortunate. Very good, you know. Jack's Saloon, Copper Creek. <laughs> oh, yes, you. You've been there, huh? A couple of years back. Well, it's a terrible blood hole. I personally am very glad to be out of there. Well, I must be going. Thanks for the drink, Mr. Clayton. See you around. I'll look forward to it. suitcase, Heath. Nobody's called for it, and we ain't find no kin to notify. Anything in it might help identify. Just clothes, like these. Some sort of uh, dance hall girl, wouldn't you say? Thanks, Phil. It's nice of you to ferry me back and forth like this, Heath. Just trying to thank you, that's all. Your mother, she's a wonderful person, you know? I've never met anyone like her. In fact, everyone's been very kind to me. 
Jim's friends. Everyone, except you, Heath. You don't like me, do you? I have no reason not to like you, do I? No, you have no reason at all. Ha, I've been waiting for you. Here, Nancy, let me take those. What did you do? Come on in, Heath. You didn't buy the whole store. Well, what's in this one? Oh, let me warn you, Nancy, before I open it up, I'm not one for fancy hats. I hope it's not too fancy. No. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Put it on. Oh, she's going to make a fine wife, ain't she? She sure is. Well, I better be getting on, Jim. You going to stay for supper? Well, I'd like to, but it's Brandon time, and you know how that is. Well, you have to eat. You might as well eat with us. Ain't that right, Nancy? Yes, please stay, Heath. Well, I'd like to, but uh, if I don't get back, Nick's liable to fire me. Oh, listen, if Nick fires you, you'll come to work for me at twice a pay. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Goodbye, Nancy. Goodbye, Heath. Goodbye, Heath. Well, I guess we'll get some of this merchandise upstairs. Nancy? What's wrong, Nancy? Heath doesn't like me. Doesn't like you? That's the craziest thing I ever heard. Well, that's true. But he's a friend. He's a good friend. What reason would he have? Anybody can see how beautiful you are and how happy you're making me. Any man would be a fool not liking you, loving you. Maybe he likes you too much. He likes you too much and he's afraid to admit it. You know, young fellas are like that sometimes. No, Jim. It's nothing like that. You're the prettiest girl ever to come to Stockton. Prettiest girl most likely ever to show up here. That's it, all right. If I'd known you were half as beautiful as you are, I'd have sent Shorty, my foreman, to pick you up. He's about as tall as he is wide and handsome as a mud fence. Jim, I want you to promise me to never be jealous of Heath, of Shorty, anyone. Promise me that. I promise. You're what I want, Jim. Just what I want. Nancy. But, Jared, you're going to San Francisco anyway. Now, couldn't you at least stop by Black and Foster's and see if you can find something? Yes, I will be in San Francisco. Yes, I could stop by Black and Foster's. However, as much as I like Jim and his bride-to-be and wish them every happiness... Well, it's not a question of their happiness. It's a question of a wedding gift. Ah, that's important. True. But so is this extremely complicated case I'm trying. Well, I suppose I could find something here in Stockton. As a matter of fact, I saw two beautiful silver candelabras at Hammond's. Candelabras? Mm-hmm. Well, I... What do you think about that, Heath? Hmm? Oh, fine. Heath, you know we got a whole army of our cattle out there waiting to be branded. Oh, I'm leaving town for a few days, Nick. After Friday. Can't wait till then. Well, I can't spare you. I need to finish that branding. I'll hire some extra men. We've hired all the extra men we can. What I need is a man out there to take charge, to give orders. Like he owned as much of this ranch as I do. Well, gentlemen, lovely lady, I bid you good morning. And please, do not fail to let me know how all this comes out. What do you have to do that's so all-fired important? Never mind. It'll wait till Friday. Well, after Friday, you can take off for a week. If you like, you can go to China for all I care. Keith, something is wrong, isn't it? I'm not ready to talk about it just yet, Mother. There. Can you put a speed up? What do you think? Oh, I think it, it looks very nice. Maria, when we started this about an hour ago, the lamp was right where it is. The side table, right where he is. <sighs> right back where we started. Uh, but the chair, we have moved the chair. <laughs> yes, we moved it about two feet. Oh, Maria, I'm hopeless. I'll just have to face up to the fact that Jim's wife, Rachel, she knew where to put a piece of furniture and make it stick. <sighs> Maria, what kind of woman was she? Oh, she was a, a nice woman, a, a good woman. 
Come sit beside me. Come on, sit down. All right. Tell me about her. You love him very much, don't you? Yes, I do. I love him. You are good for him. Better in a way than, than she could ever be. There is a, a lightness in him, a, a laughter. It was never there before. Never. Well, then, do you think if I can't cook as well as she could, or, or sew, or, or move furniture, you think we'll be all right together? Oh, you'll be much better than all right together. <laughs> oh, thank you, Maria. Well, what are you two cooking up? And Maria, talking about cooking. I will have lunch ready in, in just a few minutes. Good. Well, Nancy, what have you been up to? How about that? After 25 years, I can finally put my feet up. Thank you, Nancy. Well, I'm looking for Mr. Jim North. You're looking at him? Come on in. What can I do for you? Well, the gentleman at the bank told me I should look you up, sir. I'm, I'm Reed Clayton. I understand you have some acreage for sale. I have lots of acreage, Mr. Clayton, but I don't know where you got the idea that any of it was for sale. Hello, Miss Briggs. Nice to see you again. Hello, Mr. Clayton. You two know each other? Oh, yes. He was the gentleman that was so kind to me on the stagecoach. Oh, Mr. Clayton, a pleasure to thank you for that. Well, don't thank me, sir. Now, if I could talk to you about that acreage, I uh, think I should tell you I represent Clayton Industries. You've heard of us, of course. Oh, yes, I have. Are you planning to put in an operation here? Yes, sir, a packing plant. It would employ about 300 people. Now, I know that might not mean much to you, sir, but to the people of Stockton, it might mean a great deal. Yes, it would. I'll tell you what, Mr. Clayton, I'll saddle up a horse and we'll go for a ride. Maybe we can talk business. Nancy, would you get Mr. Clayton a drink? <laughs> back. It's uh, getting late. Yes, of course. Heath, you know Jim loves me very much, don't you? I love him. I want to make him happy. I can make him happy. You want him to be happy, too, Heath. I know that. That's really why I came here today. Jim knows you don't like me. He doesn't know why any more than I do, but he's... he's just eating him up. I love this country. Heath, what are you trying to do to me and to Jim unless you really want to hurt him? I don't want to hurt anyone. Least of all, Jim. Well, then remember this. If you do anything to hurt me, you hurt Jim much more. It's not going to work. You told me yesterday everything was fine. With Jim, but Heath Barkley. You're not marrying Heath Barkley. You're marrying Jim North. Not if Heath Barkley has his way. What's he done? Done? He's done nothing. Well, then calm down. I just can't reach him. I can't get through to him. He's not the kind you can buy off. He has a feeling there's something wrong. All right, he has a feeling, so? I know this kind, and I know he's not going to stop. I told you to calm down. I don't want to be around, Reed, when he starts shaking things up. When he finds out. If he finds out. 
You'll be long married. You'll be Mrs. Jim North, the lady of the manor. Copper Creek isn't that far away, Reed. Don't worry about it. Everything's going beautifully, beautifully. You act as if you were made for this. Reed, I'll, I'll slip. I'll say something. I'll do something, and Jim, he'll find out the truth. No, he won't. Because he's so madly in love with you, he wouldn't see the truth if it was lit up with fire on the mountain. And that's the truth. I just can't hurt him. He's a good man. He's a decent man. He's an old man. He's a rich old man. He's buying more beauty and more, more love with his money than he deserves. And we're taking far less than we could get. Should get. Reed, this was a mistake. It was a mistake right from the beginning. Do you remember when you told me that I'd, I'd given you hope? And I've shown you a way of life you didn't even know existed. You can have that way of life right now. No, not like this. Just like this. For you and I, that's the way it's got to be. We knew that when it started. Do you remember Copper Creek? The saloon at Copper Creek? Do you remember how I hated you in those garish clothes, showing yourself to everybody? Do you remember how you hated yourself? Can you go back to that now? So now you just think about the two of us. In a couple of months, after you leave him, I'll take you back home with me. And you can be Mrs. Reed Clayton. Back home? I thought your father disowned you. Well, when I can, when I can prove myself. There's no more the black sheep for me. I've got the brains to make it big in the business world. But I need a steak, and you're going to get it for me. I don't want to hurt Jim. Now, I want you to forget about that old man and think about me. About me! Of course, I can't make it anymore, drifting around from town to town, winning a dollar here and there in a cheap poker game. I need your help. So I want you to go back to Jim North and forget all about Heath Barkley. Hey, Clayton. I didn't hear you knock, Kiefer. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. I'm sure that everything will be just fine. Everything. timing very much, Keeper, but thanks for coming. Bartender said you wanted to see me. Now, what have I got? It's worth ten of your dollars. Well, if we can come to an agreement, we'll call that a down payment on services rendered. What do you got in mind? You remember the gentleman we played poker with the other day? Mr. Mr. Heath Barkley? time with Jared. Well, aren't you going to ask me what we were doing? It was mighty important business. All right. What were you doing? Nancy, you're not really interested, are you? Yes, I'm really interested. Well, I made out my new will. Them lawyers, they sure know how to take something simple and make it complicated. My whole life went into building up this place. Sure, I had a few rough years, but now I got something I'm really proud of. Nancy, something I'm proud to give you. 
It's too soon. We've only known each other less than a week. Now, how do you know things are going to work out? From the moment I first saw you, I knew things were going to work out. This ranch, everything, it's too much. Too much? It's not enough. Nancy, I don't know how to say it. But in a way, this ranch, well, it's me. That's what I want to give you. Jim, excuse me, I have to go upstairs. Can I come in? Come in. Nancy, why are you packing? I'm leaving. Maybe we were wrong to think these things could work out by letters. But the letters are over now. It's a time we've been together that's important, isn't it? That's when we really began to fall in love. Jim, I'll make a mess of things. I'll make everyone unhappy. Heath, your friend. What about him? I saw him today, and... Jim, you must let me go. It won't work. You saw Heath today? Oh, yes. Victoria was going to show me around the ranch, but she was gone. Instead, Heath did. Here it is, the height of branding season. He doesn't like you, yet he spends time running you around the ranch. Jim, it's nothing like that. I got something to straighten out. Jim, I know where you're going, but you're wrong. Nancy, you're in my way. He's had nothing to do with it. I'm afraid he does. not Jim, please. Heath, Heath! Heath, I want to talk to you. Jim, I gotta catch a train. I want to talk to you now. When I get back, it'll be too late. Get on off that horse. All right, Jim, what's bothering you? Where are you going in such a hurry? Well, I'm afraid that's personal. Personal and coincidental. What are you talking about? You and Nancy leaving town at the same time. Nancy leaving? You don't know anything about that, do you? Heath, when Nancy came to me, she brought me more happiness than I'd thought I'd ever know. I haven't got the words to explain to you what she means to me, but if I lose her, I'm finished. I'm a proud man, Heath. But I'm asking you to leave her be. You're a young fella. There'll be lots of girls for you. Jim, it's nothing like that. Don't play innocent with me. I know what you've been up to. Taking her for rides. Asking her to come up to the ranch to see you. Look, Jim, if Nancy said anything like that, why... Say anything? She's too much of a lady to say anything. I'm saying... Jim, you're wrong. I'm not gonna argue with you now. Not now. You're not going to take her away from me without a fight? Jim, I'm not going to fight with you. You're wrong in what you're thinking, Jim. One of these days you're going to see that. I guess he just don't like your smell. <laughs> Missy, you just hit my dog. Like hitting me. Now you're gonna have to draw. I'm a witness. He said, I saw the whole thing. The man was drawn on you. I'll testify to that. Thanks, Herb. You know who he was? No idea. Well, you're in the clear. I better get the sheriff. Yes, sir. 
I do. I'd like a ticket to Copper Creek, please. Copper Creek. Mister, you're gonna have to drink it fast. Don't want to drink, just some information. What kind of information? Now, come on, you little oh, kiss, huh? I don't like it. Either. You like that, don't you? <laughs> sure you do. Excuse me, mister. Good as well go home with the following, huh? Come on, cowboy. The lady's had enough of your what attention. You Let's go work closing. Let's go home now. The lady don't care for your company anymore. Well, you found what you were looking for. You might as well sit down and have a drink. Now, what was that question, mister? Never mind. <clears throat> Last drink I had in this saloon was, oh, three years ago. Three years? Whew. That's a lot of drinks ago. girl on the stage. You changed places with her, didn't you? I knew sooner or later you'd find out. Is that why you left? One thing Reed taught me is when to throw in a bad hand. What is it, Jim, you're worried about? Well, let me tell you something. How would he feel after two months if his wife told me that she didn't love him anymore and she leaves? Naturally, a nice financial settlement would be in order. You know, you had me fooled a couple of times. <laughs> Did I? At the stream that day, the way you talked. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe for a minute there I was wrong. Maybe you really did love Jim. <laughs> Not a chance. I'm sorry if I made him think different. But that's the way it goes, huh? That's the way it goes. I know he had a different kind of picture of me, but... I want you to do me a favor. When you see Jim, you give him this. That's really how I look. And when he feels sad, this will tear him up. All he has to do is look at it, and he will feel very lucky that I left him. And I wanted you to leave, Heath. He loves you. You know that, don't you? That's not my fault. I think it is. Whatever Jim is, he's not a fool. You gave him back something. But not love. Maybe kindness to an old man, but not love. Anyway, it's over. It's all over. You said he loved me. Well, he didn't. He loved a girl called Nancy Briggs. But in Jim's eyes, you were Nancy Briggs. I'm tired. He can go and home. Good night. Mind if I walk with you? Suit yourself. There's a gun pointed at you right across the street. I swear I didn't know he was here. Truth. She'll tell him. And Jim should take it. Good morning. 
Aren't you going to have any coffee before you leave? Oh, uh, no, Mother. Heath here is just itching to catch up with some branding he owes me, so we gotta get going. We'll see you later, Mother. Oh, if there's any news from Nancy and Jim, would you send one of the hands out and let me know? No, I think I'll ride over myself. I get it. Oh, Nancy, Jim, come on in. Thank you. Thank you, Heath. Next time you kiss Nancy, you'll be kissing the bride. Well, congratulations, Jim. Oh, I'm so happy for both of you. Best wishes to you, Jim. Thanks. Victoria, I'd appreciate it if you'd handle all the wedding arrangements. Heath, I'd like you to be best man. We'd like it. How do you like that? She's arguing with me already. I'd like, I mean, we'd like you as best man. <laughs>